first quarter, 12 minutes and 44 seconds, and Colgate with the football at the 10 yard line. Number 10, goes the ball. And it looks like it was caught by number six, Garrett Oakey. We were just talking about him. Mm -hmm. He uh, didn't have any receiving yards or any receptions in the game against Boston College, but he was able to get that completion right there to Oki. And they definitely need to get him going yeah. if they're able to build on this drive. And now, Colgate's on their 30 yard line. Great Brennerman. Lines up on the center. And it's a run. And that's a run for about five yards. On number 28, Max Herman. Yeah, we've been talking about him in the receiving game, but as we saw in the past two plays, uh, Brenneman was able to kind of do the play-action fake. Yeah. He was able to get the Stony Brook defense in the pass in the first play that we just talked about, and now with this one, they were able to do the run to the left, and they were able to get some nice yardage off of that. Yes. You're right about that, actually. Ah, uh, Greg Brenneman still on the center. Oh, now Max Herman motions our left. He's motioning our right. Once again, read option. Great Brenneman. What a run for about. It's about. It's about 10 yards on that play. Yeah, it's enough for a first down. We've been talking about the lack of passing, but when he was able to run the football as well, we've been talking about tight quality fields. Brenneman's able to run the ball in the game against Boston College. He was able to get 25 yards on 11 at times. So that's definitely right. something Tacosti is able to try to get in his plan. And again, off. Uh, play action fake to the running back. He was able to run right up the middle. The starting back defense needs to be able to adjust to that in this drive. Yeah, definitely. And now, number six motion out to right, left. Takes a snap. Throws it. Throws it for about eight yards. And that's Garrett Oki once again. We mentioned him on the first play. They motioned him out this time around to the left, and they were able to throw him open. Sternberg doesn't pick up on that motion. Yeah. And now it is second and two. And that was just a great play design right there. Just set Garrett Oki motioning out left, confusing the Seals' defense. And mm -hmm. that's what we're going to see a lot from Colgate, actually. That's exactly what their offense is all, all, all about. Confusing defenses. Gray Brennerman throws it. And that is about a... I think that's about a first down again. Yeah, exactly. Back to Garrett Oki. He's been their number one target so far in yeah. this game. And again, off of a play action. That's what Colgate likes to run. That's their MO. That's what they like to do. And when you're able to get that play action fake and able to get the run game going, as I mentioned with Brenneman earlier, you're able to get those easy completions. And that's something a QB like Brenneman needs to be able to do these long drives. And now Brenneman lines up in shotgun. But Brenneman looking for a receiver. Throws it. Spin move. And a nice tackle by numbers Akil Leland. Yeah, that, was just, that was just a good spin move in this them lining up on shotgun, no running back in the backfield was actually a pretty interesting play right there. Yeah, and it was, a, second and three. it was a great play design, especially too. Miles Bradley was able to kind of do a little in route and able to make that catch. And obviously, you mentioned the spin move to get the extra yardage, gain about seven yards on that play. And now, Cole is second and three. First quarter, nine minutes and 16 seconds. Turn around and take the snap. Max Herder runs the ball, and it looks like it's going to be a flag in that play. Looks like it might have been a hold on yeah. their offensive lineman. Let's see what the referee says right here. It's looking like the ball is going. It's going. It's going back. It's coming back. Yeah, it's going back. I believe the hold was on Barrel Gashi, number seventy-seven, the offensive lineman. Uh, yeah. So now it's second and fourteen. Yeah. And it looks like they're making a substitution, bringing in number 18, Ryan C.K. into the game. Yeah. He only had one reception for seven yards in the game against Boston College. Let's see what they try to do with him here on this play. Let's see what he can do on this play, to be honest. Now, it is second and 14. To Brenneman. On the center. Takes a snap. Throws it. Oh! He missed his target. 
Yeah, the tight end was wide open on that play through the sideline. He just missed it. Yeah, it was a great play. It was a great throw. The receiver was just unable to make the catch. Yeah. And now we have a third and long situation. So I'm curious to see what Colgate does here, what the coach has drawn up for this particular play. They are on the Stony Brook plus side of the field. So if they can just gain a little yardage, maybe they could settle for a field goal here. Yeah. If they can get a little bit yardage on this play, let's see what they can do. For Brennan. Colgate's the snap. Looks like he's about to get sacked. Oh, it's a double sack, but there's the a flag defense, down, too. But it's a flag down. It looks like it might have been a hold on the offensive lineman. So I don't think it's going to matter, but as we were talking about with Stony Brook, that defense and that defensive pressure was able to get to Brenham in that time and force fourth down. Yeah. Oh. Looks like a face mask. So it's an automatic first down for Colgate. Wow. wow that, that is a massive play. Wow. Wow. Yeah, the great pressure by the Seawolves, just a little too high for the face mask, and they're now able to move up to about the 30-yard line. And here's the thing. Penalties always causing the Seawolves, actually. They get a great play, and the next play is actually uh, a penalty, and that causes a lot of yards, and now that puts Colgate in nice field possession. And now Max Herter looking for room to run the ball, and that's a gain about two yards on that play. Yeah, again, you saw the receiver motioning to the left, trying to cause a little confusion with the defense. Stony Brook wasn't fooled. They run the ball right up the middle and get two yards. If the Seawolves didn't commit that penalty, that actually would have been fourth down. They would have had to punt the ball, and the Seawolves would have had the football. If you're the Seawolves, right now, you have to stay committed, stay disciplined on defense, and don't commit any more penalties because if they commit any more, it's going to look really scary. Yeah, especially when you're in the red zone, penalties are very costly on that side of the field. And now, it is. Fred Betterman looks to throw. And he throws it to number two. Joshua Zah is a great catch by him, a great little route that he was able to run in towards the middle of the field. And again, easy completions on this drive has been able to get Colgate on this side of the field. So again, we talk about the running back able to get those quick plays uh, with his feet. When you get the running game going, you're able to get those quick, short passes. That's what Brenneman's able to do on this drive. And that's actually an excellent job by Brenneman because he's actually looking better than how he looked last week against Boston College already. And now the two two guards are actually motion all right. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, let's see what they decide to do with this play. It might be a run to the right. No, actually, what a fake. But a fake for only about three yards by Great Brenneman. That was a nice play, actually, because it was two offensive linemen who motioned out right, and then the tight end motioned out right behind them. I was actually thinking it's actually going to be a run to that side because that's where you have most of your blockers at. But... Yeah, and I think that's what Stony Brook was thinking, too. They motioned yeah. a lot of players to that side, but they just kept it right up the middle with Brenneman. It was a great play design, a lot of motions, a lot of disguises, and they were able to just run it up the middle for a first down. Brenneman. And Brenneman is about to get sacked. Sacked by number two. That is just a nice sack. By Casey Williams. By Casey Williams. And Casey Williams actually has been making a lot of noise. Had the almost clutch sack last week against UNH. And now he just gets a really big sack. And now will bring up second and eighteen. Yeah, only had one tackle in the game against New Hampshire, so it's and nice for him the, to get that, that sack. Clutch. Yeah, that was exactly. The clutch sack. And now, second and eighteen, Colgate lines up, design run, and it's a run about. That's a run that is about four yards on that play, if I'm not mistaken. Again, we saw Colgate do these design quarterback runs. I see five yards on that play. Yeah. Yeah, again, with those design quarterback runs, Stony Brook so far has not been able to contain those quarterback runs. So yeah. Colgate, knowing it was second down, they decided to test it out right, right up the middle. And now third and 12, you have to think they're trying to get that first down, try to go for a, a, some type of short pass, maybe yeah. a medium pass. Oh, you never know. They might have felt thrown in the end zone. You never know. Seals lined up. Great betterment. Throws it. Go to the end zone. Throws it. Incomplete. And that is an incomplete pass. He tries to throw it 
to Oki, but couldn't get it. Yeah, even if he was able to get his feet in bounds, that would have been a difficult catch to make. So good job for Stony Brook, able to stop this Colgate offense, who looked really good on this first drive. Obviously, barring the penalty, they were able to able to. That was the only mistake they made on that drive. Yeah. So now we're gonna have the kicker come out and attempt a field goal. Yes. I believe it's Sensor Visco attempting this field yeah. goal. And it's good. So with that, Colgate is able to go on the board 3-0 early in this first quarter with about 5.06 to go. And with that, we are on commercial. So let's send it back to Matt Mankiewicz in the studio. And Russ Wright, back, back in the studios of WSB. Very quick look at what's, what's going on in the uh, rest of snap, sports right now. And let's take a look at the CAA coming up because everything starts at 2 o'clock with Lehigh and Richmond. 4 p.m., Maine and James Madison. 6, Elon and Campbell. St. Francis of Pennsylvania and Delaware at 6 p.m. Also, Towson and New Hampshire, Bucknell and Villanova. Lafayette and William and Mary, all 6 p.m. kickoffs. And 7 p.m. we got Rhode Island and you Albany at Bob Ford Field. Everybody's familiar with that, I am sure. Of course, NFL Week One is well underway because of that uh, great matchup between the Buccaneers and the Cowboys. Bucks pulled out 31-29 Thursday night. However, the one o'clock games are as follows: Eagles, Falcons, Steelers, Bills, Vikings, Bengals, 49ers, Lions, Cardinals, Titans, Seahawks, Colts. Chargers, the Washington football team, Jets, Panthers, Jaguars, Texans for the 425 games are Browns, Chiefs, Dolphins, Patriots, Packers, Saints, Broncos, Giants, Bears, and Rams. The Monday game is Ravens and Raiders. Let's send it back. And we are back. Obviously, this game is still on commercial, but let's just talk about that first drive by Colgate really quick. The penalty for the Seawolves, very, very costly. It could have prevented them from getting that field goal. But now it looks like they're able to get on the board and go early on that scoreboard, 3-0. So what did you think about that first drive by Colgate and Brenneman? Well, on that first drive, Brenneman actually looked better than how he did last week. And there was just a lot of design quarterback runs. And with that, they was able to catch the defense off guard by throwing it to um, Oye, by their star receiver number six. Garrett Oki. Yeah, Garrett Oki. And... Pretty much so far, Colgate has actually been really looking good. But if they really got saved by that penalty, if they wasn't, if they didn't have that penalty, they actually would have been punting on that drop. Exactly, that penalty was super costly. But for Stony Brook, you have to be happy not giving up a touchdown, only giving up a field goal on that drive. And with Stony Brook getting their first chance on offense, it'll be interesting to see what kind of designs they're able to do on this next drive. Yeah. Now it's a kickoff. Sean Harris. Oh, and he gets tackled. Great play by the Colgate special teamers. Able to stop Stony Brook's return, and I believe they're about to set up shop at the 15-yard line. Yeah. So it's going to be our first chance to look at Tyquel Fields here. What do you believe he needs to do? We talked about his mobility. We talked about his ability to run on multiple plays, both design and off of play action. So what do you think he needs to do in order to be successful on his first drive? Well, I actually hope Ty Kefils can actually throw the ball accurately this drive. And now they give the ball. It looks like a run right up the middle to Niket, a redshirt senior from Brooklyn. Yeah. He was able to get a lot of yardage on that play, and I don't know if Colgate just wasn't expecting it defensively. Maybe they thought it was going to be a design, but yeah. great first play by Stony Brook. And now Tyke Phillips throws it. Those are the Sean Harris Jr., and that's gain about 10 yards in that play. And yeah, we've seen play. a lot what we've seen last week. Tyke Phillips throwing the ball quickly, 
like how he did last week against UNH. And with this, I feel like they could be able to catch them off guard with them having a good running game and able to throw the ball short. And with that, it's going to open holes down deep down the field, and he's going to be able to throw the ball deep for them to score touchdowns. And now Seba, Seba carries it. Seba carries it about eight yards in that play. Yeah, great run by Siva. We mentioned Colgate's defense giving up 51 points last week. So far, Stunnerberg's been able to do anything at will against them. And we talk about Tyquel Fields' off-play action, right? We had the first play right up the middle, a quick play action, throw to the right side of the fields, and another designed run. So, so far, Stunnerberg's been able to do whatever they want on this drive. And now a second and two on the Seville's 42-yard line. And a run gets stopped by the Colgate defense. And now it'll be third down. Great stop by the Colgate defense. They tried another run right up the middle. Colgate was not fooled. They were able to clog the middle of the lane. And with third and short, this is where we could bring out maybe some quarterback runs, maybe a designed run for Tyquel Fields, or even a quick play action. So stuff like that I think is something that Stony Brook definitely needs to take advantage of yeah. on this third down. And now it's third and two on the Colgate 40 all line. Now... Tyquel Fields runs the ball with Tyson Lawton, and he runs for about two yards, and he'll be short of the fourth down. So, wow, great play by the Colgate defense. Again, not full. They try to run to the left. Colgate was able to get the stop. It's fourth in inches, I want to believe. So and it'll be interesting to see if Stonybrook punts this or if they try going for it here. It looks like they're about to actually punt the football here. 4-3. Actually, smart decision by the coach. You don't want to give up anything late, so that yeah. makes a lot of sense. And now they punt it away. All right, punch the ball to the Colgate. 18-yard line. With a fair catch by number six, mm -hmm. Garrett Oakey. Yeah. And Garrett Oakey, we've actually been saying his name a lot today. He has uh 21 yards, actually. For like two targets, two or three targets for like twenty yard, one yards, and, and he's actually actually doing having a good game so far. And I actually want to see if they actually get him more involved in his offense because last week Grant Brenneman only threw for seventy seven yards, and it looks like he was not getting targeted at all. And now with him getting targeted, it's actually moving the ball offensively for the Colgate offense. And I actually would like to see what they will do. In this possession. And now we're on commercial break and we'll bring it back to Matt. And that's right, folks. Start from the beginning there. And we do have some CAA action coming up. We are still about half an hour away from the real stuff happening. So we shall concentrate on Major League Baseball, and guess what? Nothing's happening there yet either. Uh, first game's at 220, Giants and Cubs. Rangers and Athletics at 407. 435, Blue Jays and Orioles. First game, the doubleheader, and then, of course, right after that, the second. Not a double admission. Uh, Fox, Rockies and the Phillies at 605, 610 for the Rays and Tigers. Also, Brewers and Indians, Nationals and Pirates at 635. Angels and Astros at 710. Royals and Twins likewise. Same for the Red Sox and the White Sox. 715 for the Reds and the Cardinals. 720 for the Marlins and the Braves. Yankees and the Mets start off at 745, a little later than usual at City Field. And the Padres and the Dodgers at 910 out on the coast. Likewise for the D-backs and the Mariners. Of course, Yankees struggling. Uh, they, of course, uh, lost a bad one to the uh, New York Mets last night, but looking to bounce back tonight. However, let's take a look also at what's going on later on today in the CAA. Uh, Lehigh and Richmond, 2 p.m. kickoff, 4 p.m. for James Madison and Maine. Eat, Elon, rather, and Campbell at 6. Same for St. Francis of Pennsylvania and Delaware. Townsend, New Hampshire, Bucknell and Villanova, Lafayette and William and Mary, all 6 p.m. kickoffs. Rhode Island and Albany following at 7. Let's send it back to the guys. And actually, it looks like it's going to be an injury timeout 
Yeah, it looks like one of the Stony Brook defenders on that play got injured. Hopefully he's doing okay. But as they tend to him, let's talk about the first drive for Colgate. They played pretty well. They did get a key aid based on that penalty from Stony Brook, so they were able to move up into the red zone. Couldn't really do anything with that advantage. However, they were able to kick a field goal, and right now they have a 3-0 lead. So what do you think they need to continue doing or need to well, adjust going well, into actually, the second drive? The team being hot in the passing game. They're 4-4 four for, four for 45 yards. Greg Betterman throwing half the yards he threw last week against Boston College. They're seeing, we're seeing a lot of quarterback design runs, and actually, that's actually good because with, that, with Greg Betterman able to use his legs, it's going to throw defenses off. He's going to be able to hit play action, able to hit quick throws because the defense is going to be worried about him running. And these quarterback design runs are not like options. They're like they setting these receivers into motion. And he's actually running up the middle or he's either running up the sideline. And it's actually working for this Colgate offense. They started off hot. And let's see what happens on this drive. Yeah, I think Colgate, Stony Brook needs to take a page out of Colbrook's, Colgate's playbook. A lot of QB design runs we've seen early on from Brenneman. And when you're able to get the running game going, as we've been saying, you're able to get that play-action pass and get those quick dots you're being able to throw. Brenneman, as you mentioned, he's been perfect so far, barring the penalty, obviously, from Stony Brook. Yeah. That's the only upside for Colgate, but downside for Stony Brook defensively. So going into the second drive, I think they need to continue what they're doing. We mentioned Garrett Oki. He's been the main receiver for Colgate so far. Three receptions for 39 yards. And his longest catch was 21 yards. Exactly. And the one thing you need to be careful, though, if you're Colgate, you don't want to just target Oki. Because if you are just using one receiver, Sternberg can easily game plan against that and take him out of the game. Yeah. So I think definitely for Colgate, it's great that they've been able to get Oki going so far. But they need to get some of the other receivers involved. You mentioned Ryan C.K., Jake Spencer. And Rory Boos as well as William Parker, they need to be able to get them going on this drive. Yes, you're right about that, actually. They need to find more receivers and get them open. But Greg Oki doing his job is getting open. And I feel like you feed him, he's going to have a hot head and he's going to have a lot of momentum going. And now that's a run by Max Hurley for about only a yard. And a great stop by Casey Williams and Tyler King on that defense. Exactly. Stony Brook coming with the blitz this time. They figured it was going to be a run, a second and short play. They just tried to run to the left. They weren't able to get any yardage. And we talked about Stony Brook on third and short. Colgate now is faced with the third and one. So it'll be interesting to see what they do on this play. And now it's third and one at the Colgate. And now it's a design run by Great Benjamin. And it looks like Sewell's is saying that he was short, but... Actually, it looks like it was actually a first down. Yeah, Let's according the to the referee, it looks like they're going to give Brenneman the first down. Actually, no, it wasn't. I don't think it was Brenneman. It was number five who actually ran that ball. Number six. Oh, Grant Oki. Wide receiver design runs right there. See? Exactly. We mentioned Brenneman. He's been doing most of the running in this game, but able to get Oki involved on that yeah. third down and, and able to get a nice conversion. And now you see Colgate actually running their offense with a lot of wide receiver design run plays. And... They just caught Stony Brook off guard, and now that's a stop right there by number 36 on the Seawolves defense. And it looks like... Another injury, yeah. it looks like, to Colgate this time. Yeah, it looks like it was an injury. It looks like number 39 actually gave a, a hit. Yeah, hopefully he is okay. And... From there, the teams are going to step aside, and we are going to stay here for a minute. And let's talk about Colgate. We've been able to talk about Brenneman and his running ability. Now they're able to get Garrett Oki involved in the run game. So how key do you think it will be moving on in this game, able to get those wide receiver design runs? They were able to attempt a lot of those in the game against Boston College. They didn't have too much success. But able to run those trick plays, I think, is something that Colgate is going to need in terms of being able to get an edge in this game. Yes, and I do feel like if Colgate actually continues to just run their offense, I feel like the Seawolves will actually not be able to be disciplined and not be able to know what's actually going on. Because if you have too much motion and going on, you're going to be confused on what's going on on defense because there's too many 
teams motioning and stuff like that. So it'll be really interesting to see what Koge actually does here. Yeah, and it looks like the player now is limping off the field with the help of the trainers. So hopefully he is okay. And it looks like play is going to continue here. We are on the 30-yard line yeah. as Colgate and Grant Brenneman is able to take the snap. And now, first quarter, 31 seconds. Grant Brenneman runs. Runs for about five yards on that play. About five or six yards. We've been talking about it all game. That is going to be part of Colgate's offensive game plan. Able to get those quarterback designed runs from Grant Benderman. Able to take it up the middle. And with that, it looks like Colgate's going to run out the clock here. And that will be the end of the first quarter. Your score, Colgate is up 3-0 right now on Stony Brook. And so far, it looks like Colgate has been able to take control of this game. Able yeah. to keep the Stony Brook offense off the field. And so far, they've been able to keep these nice long drives so far. We've only had two. But from what we've been able to see so far, Colgate offensively has been able to do what they need to get done. Yes, and we're seeing Colgate actually managing the clock this this um, first quarter. With having about more time possession in Stony Brook and I feel like that's more of their style to be honest they don't hit you down deep they hit you short and they catch you off with these plays to keep the offense going and to keep the defense tired because if you're in there for a really long time the defense is actually going to really get tired like on their scoring drive they had about 10 plays 74 yards and that's a really long possession really long time with running 10 plays for 74 yards exactly and able to keep those long methodical drives is something Colgate needs to do I think their game plan going into this is to keep Stony Brook's offense off the field rely on their offense to get the job done and for them to have the last possession in this game so at the end of the first quarter the Colgate Raiders are up 3-0 and with that we will send it back to the studio and Matt Mankiewicz that's right folks we shall Take a quick look at what's going on and will be going on because uh, thanks to a lot of the festivities, somber festivities, of course, surrounding the 20th anniversary of 9-11, everything starts a little later than usual. In particular, Major League Baseball, uh, the first game today is scheduled for 220, Giants and the Cubs. That's at Wrigley. Rangers and the Athletics at 407, 435. Blue Jays and Orioles, first game of a doubleheader. And then, of course, game two following immediately afterward. Not a day nighter. Rockies and the Phillies at 605. Rays and Tigers at 610. Brewers and Indians, likewise. Nationals and Pirates at 635. 710 starts for the Angels and Astros, Royals and Twins, Red Sox and White Sox. Reds and the Cardinals get started at 715. Marlins and Braves at 720. Yankees and the Mets a little later than usual at City Field, 745. Again, a pregame ceremony to take place. Uh, the Padres and the Dodgers at 910. D-backs and Mariners likewise at 910. Also, taking into consideration everything going on, we do have a 2 p.m. kickoff for Lehigh and Richmond in the CAA. May and James Madison, Elon Campbell, St. Francis and Delaware, Towson, New Hampshire, Bucknell and Villanova, Lafayette, William and Mary, Rhode Island and Albany. Round out your CAA schedule for today. Let's send it back. And we are back here. Colgate Raiders are up 3-0 as we approach the beginning of the second quarter. And overall, Colgate has been able to do whatever they want offensively. A lot of quarterback design runs with Grant Brenneman. And that's something they need to continue doing going into the second quarter. Yes, and what we were saying earlier, Koge has actually beat out Stony Brook with time possession. They had the ball for 7 minutes and 57 seconds. And Stony Brook only had the ball for 1 minute and 57 seconds. A, seven, a 6 minute difference. Exactly, exactly. And... and with that time of possession being so great, that's something Colgate has definitely incorporated into their game plan. Being able to keep Stony Brook's offense off the field and be able to do whatever they want offensively. And so far, being able to do these long methodical drives is something that 
they want to do, and that's something they need to continue doing. The key receivers so far in this game, Garrett Oakey, we mentioned he's been a huge part of their offense. He's had three receptions for 39 yards so far in this first quarter. And just overall, Grant Brenneman, he's already having a better game than he had against Boston College so far. Yes, so far, throwing for about 45 yards, and that's half of what he had last week. Already done by in the first quarter against the Seawolves defense. And as we begin the first play of the second quarter, one thing Sturberg needs to adjust defensively is for those quarterback design runs. Yes. They've been sending a lot of blitzes. They've been able to try to clog up the middle as much as they can, but Colgate's been able to do whatever they want offensively. And now it's third and four on the Colgate 35 yard line. Let's see what Greg Bitterman. Greg Bitterman takes a snap, and he is sacked! Sacked! By number 17, Carthel Flowers. A great defensive design by Stony Brook. Sending the heat. Grant Brennan didn't know what to do. He got sacked. And this is the first big play that Stony Brook's defense has been able to do in this game. Yes. We mentioned the sack earlier on the first drive. Unfortunately, it was wiped out due to a massive face mask penalty. But, again, we talk about... Brent Brenderman not being able to take the pressure. Started sending the blitz that time and able to get to him. And that was just a great blitz by the Seawolves defense. And Great Brenderman, like you said, had had no idea of what to do on that on that play. And that was just a great design by Cartel Files blitzing up the B gap and sacking Great Brenderman. And now Seawolves will get the ball back. But it looks like they caught a flag on the play. It looks like it was on the on the Raiders on that. Yeah, it looks like they're backing up, giving their punter a little more room to punt the ball and try to pin it within the 10-yard line. Yeah. Actually, no, they're moving it. Oh, no, never mind. So now, 14 minutes left, second quarter, Kogi comes out, and they're about to punt the football. As Colgate punts the ball away, let's talk about what Stony Brook needs to adjust going into their second drive. Obviously, time of possession, key for Colgate right now, is a part of the reason why they've been able to get this lead so far as Stony Brook is able to get a short return there. We need to talk about what Tyquel Fields needs to do. The first three plays, he did really well. It looked like the Seawolves were unstoppable. But then the Colgate defense tightened up in their run game, and they were able to force a key stop there on that third down. Yes, you're right about that, Anthony. And look, if the Seawolves are able to have a good possession right here. Wind down the clock against this Colgate defense and try to put down a touchdown. That will actually be good for the Seawolves, actually. They will have a lot of momentum. And that's the biggest problem that I think that's been going on for last week. And I think that's been going on to the start of this week. The time possession. The UNH last week had more time possession than the, Sea Wolves, than the Sea Wolves. And this week, Colgate having more time possession already than the Seawolves by a six-minute difference, which is very bad. Very, very bad. And we talked about in the game against New Hampshire how they were able to fall back, uh, not be able to score as early as they should. They fell down 27-zip in that game. Very huge deficit in that third quarter. Mm -hmm. Luckily for them, they're only down three in the second quarter. So with that, we're going to go back to Matt Mankiewicz in the studio and see what the Stony Brook Seawolves have cooked up for the second quarter. And back in the studios of WSB, Matt Mankiewicz here. As we were saying, we do have a full CAA schedule, but top 25 in action as well. At the half, next week's Carlos opponent with the is University of Oregon, uh, leading number two or number three Ohio State, rather 14 to seven at the half. As we said, number 25 Auburn up on Alabama State, 20 to nothing at the half. 215 left in the first, 13th ranked Florida leads South Florida, a past Stony Brook opponent, 14 to 3. Number 19 Virginia Tech gets Middle Tennessee at 2. Eighth ranked Notre Dame hosts Toledo at 230. Second ranked Georgia hosts UAB at 330. Fifth ranked Texas AM visits Colorado at 330. Murray State is visiting number seven Cincinnati at 330. Number 11 Penn State hosts Ball State at 330. 4 p.m., Mercer and top-ranked Alabama. Ninth-ranked Iowa State and Iowa, interstate rivalry at 4.30. In trust state, I should say. Uh, 5 p.m., 6th-ranked Clemson hosting South Carolina State. 7, it's number 4, Oklahoma and Western Carolina. Likewise, 15th-ranked Texas at Arkansas. 
18th ranked Wisconsin hosting Eastern Michigan. All 7 p.m. starts. And number 22, Miami hosting Appalachian State. 7.30, Ole Miss and Austin P. Number 20, Ole Miss, the Rebels. Uh, and 7.30, Number 24, uh, North Carolina uh, takes on Georgia State. 21st ranked Utah takes on BYU, another interstate rivalry at 10 15. 10 30, USC Stanford, 14th ranked Trojans taking on the Cardinal. And 10 30, number 23, Arizona State takes on UNLV. Let's send it back. Now it is first and 10 on the Seals 30 yard line, and Todd Phil stole the ball. And he throws a touchdown. Touchdown to number 11. Hey, he throws a touchdown to Sean Harris Jr. That's crazy because our, our camera angle didn't really see, like, what happened when I played. But we just seen number 11 in the end zone. And that was just a touchdown. It looked like Takel Foles was able to throw a nice dart to Sean Harris Jr. And he was able to actually... Score or was that Sean Harris or Delonte Helms? I believe that was Sean Harris. Yeah, Sean and Harris. we talked about coming out of the, the break what Stony Brook needed to do as they make that PAT there. It was just looked like a simple play action fake, able to run a simple streak route down the middle of the field. And Sean Harris just beat his man, plain yeah. and simple. And Tyquo Fields had enough time in the pocket to able to launch the ball deep there and for Stony Brook, that is something they need to explore going into further in this game, going with those play-action fakes and see if they can burn their man over the top. And yes. obviously, Sean Harris was able to do it right there. Yes, um, that was actually a good play call because Stony Brook has really fast receivers. If you play them man-to-man, -man, they're going to burn out their corner like more, like a higher percent of the time, literally. And that was just a great throw by Tyke Phillips. Like I said earlier, he needs to be more accurate. And with him throwing that ball to Sean Harris Jr., Sean Harris Jr. is really fast, able to burn out his man, scores a touchdown. And now they're up 7-3 against Colgate. And now we want commercial break, and we're sending it right back to Matt. And that's right. We'll stay ahead of everything that is coming up, as we said. Still... A lot of games yet to be played today. You're pretty much listening to the only CAA action going on right now, but that's okay. Uh, we do have an update, however. And at the end of one now, 13th ranked Florida is up on South Florida, 14 to three. Went through the uh, top 25 scores earlier. WNBA games coming up. There are a couple. The Liberty are in Dallas at eight o'clock. And Connecticut Sun take on the Phoenix Mercury at 10 p.m. And, uh, yeah, we even have a couple of uh, premiership scores going. Uh, one game live, Chelsea and Aston Villa. It's 2-0 uh, in favor of uh, Chelsea, uh, Chelsea, I almost said, but under Russian ownership. Uh, let's see. Man City. Beat Leicester 1-0. Man U over Newcastle 4-1. I believe that's Cristiano Ronaldo's debut. Let's send it back. So, we just saw Stony Brook actually score a touchdown against this Colgate defense on first down and 10 on their 35-yard line. And, you know, it's pretty interesting to me, you know, since our camera we couldn't really see the angle, but it looked like it was a play action. Sean Harris beats out his man and scores a touchdown. And like what we were saying before we went to break, if Stony Brook is able to catch Colgate off play action and send their man all, all out on the streak, they have speedy receivers. They're not going to be able to cover that 100% of the time. There's a high percent chance of Stony Brook's receiver catching it on a man-to-man -man then Colgate actually deflecting the pass because, I'm not going to lie, speed beats out any good corner. Exactly. And we talk about Tyquo Fields. We talk about Sean Harris Jr. I think the one reason why that play worked was because Stony Brook and Tyquo Fields had time in the pocket to be able to launch that ball. Yeah. If he didn't have the time, I don't think the ball would have gotten there, to be quite honest with you. So yeah. shout out to the offensive lineman there for able to keep that Colgate front seven off of Tyquo Fields. 
And as you said earlier, speed beats out coverage most of the time. If you're able to have that time in the pocket, you're able to launch that ball deep. And that's exactly what happened with Stony Brook on that last drive. Yeah. So did it seem like they were phased by that last drive, by Colgate able to get that big stop defensively and able to surround immediately with the touchdowns? So it would be interesting to see how Colgate's offense now responds. And we were talking about time of possession, right? And I think that's exactly why Colgate wants to keep the time of possession battle in their favor. Because we saw what Stony Brook did. Very quick touchdown. Yeah. Very simple streak down yeah. the left side of the field. And they were able to score so quickly off of that. Now they have yeah. a lead. You don't, you don't want to leave them with the ball. And now there's a quarterback design run once again through the middle. But the Seals will stop Grant Benneman as he gained for about two yards in that play. And it will be second and eight. I believe. Again, we've been talking about it all game. Grant Brenneman with a design QB run right up the middle off of the play action fake to his running back. Able to take it right up the middle. Stony Brook did a nice job of keeping him to a short game. And now it's second and eight on the Stony Brook 28-yard line. And Grant Brenneman throws a pass. Throws it to number 25 through the sideline. And I'll, that will bring up a first down. That was a gain about nine yards in that play. Again, great design. Brenneman rolling out to his right, able to find the receiver on the right side of the field, right by that sideline, able to make a fantastic catch on that sideline. And that's what Colgate needs to do. Just quick design plays, able to get the ball out of his hands relatively quickly there. And Colgate now getting a first down. And now it's first and 10 on the Colgate 35-yard line. Those, no, it's a run. Raw receiver design run to Gret. Oi, Oki, for Again. about five yards in that play, and now we're starting to see the wide receiver design runs. Exactly. The offense. Exactly, and when you have a wide receiver that's able to run the ball like Oki has been able to do so far in this game. Again, not many big gains, but just short ones. And I think that's what Colgate has been trying to do offensively and able to get that done as we move on to the second down play. And now it's second down for Oki. And it looks like he'll get stopped by number 35. Nice job, actually, by number 35 on that play on the Seawolves defense. Yeah, great job by the Stony Brook defense there. They snuffed out the quarterback play immediately, and Brenneman was able to get almost no gain on that play. So, again, great job by the Seawolves defense there. And now that will bring up third down on the Colgate 44-yard yard line. Third and fouls. Brenneman shotgun. Looks for a receiver. And he looks like he'll get sacked. Sacked again by number nine, who had the big stop earlier on the last play. So far, Stony Brook's defense has been able to respond relatively nicely. And with that being said, Grant Brenneman had no time in the pocket whatsoever. As soon as the ball was snapped, the Stony Brook defense was all over him. It looks like they sent a blitz that time and yeah. able to get to Brenneman and ultimately sack him on that play. And that was just a beautiful job by number nine coming in on the blitz and sacking Grant Brenneman. And now it will be bring up fourth down, fourth and long. And it looks like Colgate will actually have, have to punt the ball to give the Seagulls back the football. And now, we'll send it back to Matt to WSB Studios. And back in the studios of WSB, let's get you up to date on, first of all, a few things going on in as we get closer to 2 o'clock and the start of the rest of the CAA schedule. First off, keeping things interesting, we have an update. Well, actually... No updates yet. We were just early in the second quarter and no change in that Florida, uh, so the, the South Florida score. Uh, we do have Lehigh and Richmond at 2 p.m. kickoff there. Maine and James Madison at 4. Elon Campbell at 6. Same for St. Francis of PA in Delaware. Townsend in New Hampshire at 6. Bucknell and Villanova at 6. Lafayette, William and Mary at 6. Rhode Island and Albany at 7. Okay, Major League Baseball keeping busy and they're still about 20 minutes away 25 minutes away from the start of Giants and Cubs at Wrigley Field but a lot of pregame activity going on 
in remembrance of the 20th anniversary of 9-11, and we'll be talking a little bit about that at halftime as well. Rangers and Athletics at 407, 435, Jays and Orioles. Game two following immediately after that. It's not a day-nighter. Uh, Rockies and Phillies at 605, 610 for Rays and Tigers. Brewers and Indians at 610 as well, 635, Nationals and Pirates. 710, Angels and Astros, Royals and Twins and Red Sox and White Sox. 715, Reds and Cardinals. 720, Marlins and Braves. 745, Yankees and Mets at City Field. Padres and Dodgers at 910, likewise for the D-backs and the Mariners. Let's send it back. Okay, welcome back. Mo and Anthony here. Um, what we've seen so far is the Seals defense actually now starting to play discipline. They're actually starting to get adjusted to now see them quarterback design runs by Great Betterman running up the middle. And on that fourth down play, fourth and four, a nice sack by McKay Williams on that play on the blitz. And now Colgate lines up to punt the ball to the Seawolves to give the Seawolves back the football. Yeah, the Seawolves did a great job defensively on that second and third down. Uh, Kai Smith, he had four tackles, one and a half tackles for loss, and a quarterback hurry in their game against New Hampshire. So on that second down, able to sniff out the run and hold the running back to a short gain. And on the third down, obviously getting the huge sack to get Colgate off the field. And you have to feel good if you're Stony Brook right now. Had a huge touchdown on the last drive, able to hold Colgate to a very quick drive here. And with 10.52 left in the second quarter, Stony Brook's offense is able to get back on the field. Yes. And now it will be first and 10 on the Seals 20 yard line. Toss on line and runs. Runs outside. Cuts it out. And he runs the ball for 10 yards in that play. Looks like there was nothing in the middle, and he cuts back up to the sideline and runs out for 10 yards. And it will bring up first and 10 on the Seawolves 31-yard line. Great design by the Stony Brook offense there and their offensive coordinator. Able to get Tyshawn Lawton a great run to the right. He was able to break through that hole created by his offensive lineman and able to run up that sideline for a very nice game. So great job by the Seawolves there. First and 10 on the Seawolves 31-yard line. Play action fake. Tycal Phil is rolling out right. Rolling out right. Makes a defender miss. Spins off. And that's a runabout for five yards. And that was just a good job by Tyquel Fields, actually. But you saw how when Tyquel Fields snapped the ball and he gave the play-action fake to his running back, Tyshawn Tyshawn Lawton, he was able to get so much space off of that play-action fake. So he had the whole field in front of him to look at. So great job by the Colgate secondary. No one was open, or at least Tyquel Fields didn't see anybody open. So he took off. And this is the first design run that... Ty Cole Fields has been able to do in this game. So yes. good job to Stony uh, to Colgate secondary there. But a better play by Ty Cole Fields able to second use his and, likes. Second and three on the Seawolves 41 yard line. Toss on line runs for about five yards on that play, and it will bring up a Seawolves first down. Again, Tyshawn Lawton, so far, two big runs on this drive, able to move the chains here, running right up the middle. And the offensive lineman for the Seawolves so far, they don't usually get the credit that they deserve, but so far in this game, Tyco Fields has not been sacked, and their offensive line has actually played a really fantastic job, especially yes. in the run game. Well, they got big names on their offensive line, like Kyle Nunes and Cam Lucas. And now, Tyco Fields is lined up on the center, first and 10 on the Seawolves 45 yard line, and Seba, Seba runs for about. 10 yards, but it's a flag on the play. It looks like the play might actually be going back. Yeah, again, we'll see what the penalty is in just a second. But, again, a great design by Stony Brook's offense, able to get another run to the right side of the field. And with Siba able to take advantage of that big game, but we'll see if it stands. Now you're seeing the Seabulls actually starting to run the ball here. And with running the ball, it's going to cast the defense off goal with play action. Because if you're able to have a good run game, you're able to have a good play action game. And that's what Ty Kefos actually becomes good in. Because he's actually good at play action passes and throwing the ball down deep on play action. Instead of throwing the ball actually inside the pocket. So, they need to actually be able to pound the football, gain more yards, and be able to make Ty Kefos feel comfortable on these play-action plays designed by Chuck Puyol. 
And again, it looks like there was a holding on the offensive lineman, so they're moving it back. But again, that right side of the offensive line, we talk about Kyle Nunes, Justin Morgan. So far, they've both played phenomenal games yeah. as they run to that side again. And now Siva runs the ball for about five yards of that play. And it will bring up second down. Again, we talk about these design runs. Siba able to again get a nice hole from his offensive line as it's now second and six. Yeah. And, and so six. far has been able to do whatever they want in that run game. And it looks like it's a fl oh. It was a looks like it was an offside on the defense on that play. Yeah, it looks like Stony Brook was trying to get a quick jump there, and they it looks like it. they got the Colgate defense, so now they're moving up five yards. And that will that'll bring up second and one on the Colgate 49-yard line. Now they're moving towards the Colgate territory. And for Stony Brook, that's what you need to do, as it's actually, now actually a first, first down. So with these design runs so far uh, Tyshawn Lawton and uh, Siba as well they've been able to do really well in the run game so now let's see if they continue to go with it or go with the pass as actually they're going with the design run with Tyquel Fields right up the middle to gain about five yards there yeah actually it looked like it was uh, it was actually second and one because Tyquel Fields actually did a quarterback sneak which is pretty interesting and now that will actually bring up first down and ten yeah, so that was a mistake on the scoreboard crew there. But, again, Stony Brook keeping on the ground. So far, their ground game has been very fantastic in this game. Again, give a huge credit to their offensive lineman, but also their running backs have been fantastic in this game. Now it was first and 10 on the Colgate 42-yard line. Taka Phil's lined up on the center. Looks like it's a play action. Taka Phil's looking, looking, runs. Runs, make a defender miss, and he runs for about seven yards in that play. And listen, like I said earlier, Tyka Phillips really needs to use his legs. He uses his legs. He's a dangerous threat to any defense. Exactly, and you saw number 37 coming off the le uh, the edge from the left side, and Tyquel Phillips doing a nice job moving out of that pocket, moving to the right side, and able to kind of run up for a nice gain. Yeah. So. We need to see Tyquel Fields do that more often. That's like the first pressure Colgate has been able to get in this game. But Fields did a nice job moving out of the pocket and getting a few yards. That was a nice job sensing pressure. And now it's second and five. And now Tyson Lawton runs the ball. Runs throughout the sideline for about 15 yards in that play. Nice job by Tyson Lawton. And we've been saying his name a lot on this drive. Having two big run plays on this drive. One for about 13 yards and one for about 15 yards. And... That will bring up a first down and 10 as the Seawolves are now in red zone territory. First and 10 on their own 20, I mean on the Colgate 20 yard line. Again, great job by the Seawolves. The first drive, there wasn't really much going on because we had the street touchdown. In this drive, they've been using the run game, and the Colgate defense honestly has not been able to stop the run in this particular drive. Yes. Touchdown line having a nice run there to the sideline. And that was first and 10. As they will continue to run the ball, but Sheba only runs the ball for about one yard on that play, and that will bring up second and nine. That was a good tackle by number 54 on the Colgate defense. Exactly, and I think for Stony Brook, they need to run to the right side of the field. They've had a lot of success running to the right side of the field. This time they try left. They're able to not get yards. Actually, a loss of one on that play. Yeah. So I think that's something Stony Brook needs to do. And now it's second and 11. Oh, looks like. A flag is thrown on that play. No, yes, yeah, a flag is thrown on that play. And it looks like a false start by uh, number 54 there. So they saw the blitz was coming. They jumped a little too early, and now they're moving back five yards. Ooh, that's actually not good. No. Yeah, it's an offside committed by Justin Morgan, right tackle. But like we said, we've seen a lot of success running the ball to the right side due to Justin Morgan and Kyle Nunez being able to block and Kyle Nunez named all preseason first team CAA and now it's second and 16 on the Seawolves, I mean on the Colgate 26 yard line and it looks like it was an incomplete pass thrown to the right to Seba Niket and Anthony, what are you 
went wrong on that play? I think with the Stony Brook Seawolves, they saw Colgate was coming with the blitz. They decided to dump the ball off to the right side a little too quickly. Seawolves was not ready for the pass, and it led to an incompletion. And now it will be third and 16 on the Colgate 26-yard line. And let's see what Stony Brook actually have designed here on third and 16, third and long. Tucker Phil is looking for the snap. Single back formation. Runs up in shotgun. Tucker Phil is looking. Serving. Throws the ball. Throws the ball up. To number one on that play. And I was interesting. I was really interesting as he threw the ball short on third and long. Yeah, they threw the ball there to Hunter Hayek, who only had 19 yards in the game against New Hampshire. So I think with that play, Stony Rick was just trying to get in bill goal range and get a better field goal attempt for their kicker. And I think the play that ultimately killed this drive was the false start by yeah, Justin Morgan. Because they had a lot of momentum going with a lot of big run plays on that possession. And now this will bring up a field goal. Four minutes left. And the snap is good. Kick is good. No, kick is no good. Wow. wow. We mentioned Guglielmo in the last game against New Hampshire. He missed a 36-yard field goal and so he just far. just missed about a 36-yard field goal this play, too. It's he, just he's actually have a really, he has a really good boot for a kicker. It's actually, that was just a surprising miss spot. Girl Gilmo. Yeah, so far his season has not been good so far, missing two kicks. And instead of going up by seven, it still remains a four-point game as Colgate's offense goes back on the field. Yes, and that was really close. That should have never happened. It's actually really surprising because he can actually kick the football. And it's surprising that he actually missed a 36-yarder, which is actually a chip shot to him. And that just ruined the whole momentum as the Seawolves was actually moving the ball downfield. For them to come up with just zero points. And now, we're on commercial break and we'll bring it to Matt. Back in the studios of WSB, Matt Mankiewicz here. Let's get you up to date on everything that is about to go on, is particularly one game in the Colonial Athletic Association, and that is, of course, Lehigh and Richmond. They're just underway. Two o'clock uh, kickoff. Maine and James Madison at four. Elon Campbell, St. Francis of Pennsylvania and Delaware. Townsend in New Hampshire. Bucknell and Villanova. Lafayette, William and Mary all at six. Rhode Island and Albany at seven. Let's send it back to the guys. And we're back here on WSB. Colgate able to keep Stony Brook from scoring any points, as we mentioned before the break. Guglielmo missing again a 36-yard field goal. He missed a similar field goal against New Hampshire. So for Stony Brook, you had a lot of momentum on your side. You were doing a great job, had a lot of things going for them on the run. But then the false start by Justin Morgan moved them back five yards, and it kind of killed the drive, and the missed field goal ultimately put the nail in the coffin yes. there. What went on that drive? We saw Stony Brook able to just pound the football. And when they were just able to pound the football offensively, they was able to get down and march down to the red zone. And it looked like they had a lot of momentum going in before that flag committed on Justin Morgan, the right tackle for Stony Brook. And that just killed the whole momentum because after them marching down to the red zone, they had to go back being second along, third along, and the missed field goal by Gil Gilmo, and he had a weird start to the season with 0-2, and, and it's not really looking good for his season so far. And now we're bringing back, Greg Betterman throws the ball, and it looked like he just threw it out of bounds, and it was a quarterback hurried by McKay Williams. He's been saying his name a lot. Yeah, McKay Smith able McKay to, Smith. again, get the hurry on Grant Brenneman there. We saw the wide receiver there kind of do a motion to the left side, try to draw some of the defense there. Ultimately, Stony Brook was not fooled, 
And as Grant Brennerman ran to the right side of the field, he got the ball away before uh, Makai Smith was able to get to him. Yeah, and now it's second and ten. As Greg Betterman looks like a design run once again, and he's got stopped. Yeah, stopped by number 70 there. Brandon Lopez, we've been talking about the Stony Brook defensive line early on in this game. They had the running back go to the line of scrimmage. They thought maybe it's full Stony Brook and see if they'll bite. They did not. They brought Herman back in. They did a design run with Grant Brenneman. And ultimately, Brandon Lopez was not fooled, and he was able to get there for the tackle. And now this will bring up third and long on the Colgate 18-yard line. Let's see what Colgate actually have designed here. Third and 12. Greg Brenneman takes a snap. Looks like it's a screen pass to Max Herleman, and it's stopped by number 39. And now that will bring up fourth and long, and looks like Colgate will actually punt the football with two minutes to go in the first half. Let's see what the Seawolves will actually do on this offensive possession that they get the ball back here. Yeah, but first of all, let's give credit to Stony Brook's defense, able to give Colgate's offense a three and out here. And overall, Colgate just couldn't get anything done offensively. They tried the screen game, it didn't work. They tried the design run, it didn't work. And ultimately for Stony Brook, although you weren't able to get points on the last drive, you get the, goal, the ball back relatively quickly here with about 2.20 left in this first half here. And for Stony Brook, you have to be ecstatic. Defensively, getting that quick three and out, you give Ty Quill Fields about two minutes now to work with and possibly go up by two possessions here to end the first half. And it actually looked like it was a bad punt, and now that will leave Stony Brook to really good field position as they are marked on the Colgate 47-yard line. 48-yard line, actually. Yeah, it was a bad punt by uh, Shelby Pruitt, it looks like. And overall... He had to punt a lot in the last game against Boston College. This punt, not so good. And now with Stony Brook having great field position, let's see what they do here. Exactly. Talk at foes. Take the snap. And it's a nice run by Siba for about eight yards on that play. Great design by Stony Brook going through that offensive line once again. And Siba running right up the gut for a nice gain on that first down. And in these last two possessions, we've been saying a lot of the running backs' names, Seaman and Kent and Tyson Lawton, and they're now actually having a lot of room in the ground game. Actually, it was about for three yards, actually. But that was actually a really good run. And now it's second and seven with one minute and 45 seconds to go in the first half. Taka Fells take the snap, surveying, and it looks like he's running for about four yards in that play and will bring up third and short. Nice job by Ty Ken Fields. Realizing there's nobody, takes the run and slides to protect his body. And now there's one minute left in the first half. Third and short. Ball on the Colgate 40-yard line. Third and three. Yeah, but Stony Brook, a great design by Ty Quill Fields. Seeing no one was open, they had the offensive line right behind him. He saw the middle of the field wide open, so he ran right up the gut. And now, looks like Ty Quill Fields, option. Taka Fell uses legs, and he looks like he'll be stuck, and it looks like it'll bring fourth and, fourth and short. It was a nice play call, nice option. It just was a great job by the Colgate defense, realizing it's an option, and a nice tackle by number 27 on that play on the Colgate defense. And now bring up fourth and one. Looks, what would they do here? Either go for it or have the punt it. It looks like they will go for it on fourth and one. And a quarterback sneak by Todd Cal Fields. And now the Seawolves are actually caught a timeout with 32 seconds to go in the first half. Nice quarterback sneak by Todd Cal Fields. And looks like they were caught a timeout. Anthony, what do you think about that play right there? Um, I think it's a great idea for them to go for it on fourth down. They don't have much to lose. However, I believe it was poor clock management by the Stony Brook offense. They only have now about 32 seconds to work with now. So let's go back to a little bit. That third down play, it was a great design by the Stony Brook offense, but a great stop by Owen Goss of Colgate, able to kind of stuff him there for fourth and short. 
And Sternberg quickly hurrying up to the line, going right up the middle again with Tyquil Fields, able to get that first down. Yes. But again, I think it was just poor clock management by the Stony Brook offense. So I don't know what they're going to try to do here. If I were them, maybe at least play it safe to at least get a field goal. But if the red zone is open, they should definitely try to take some shots there, maybe draw some pass interference calls, stuff of that nature. I'll say take some shots down deep, see what you can work with. If not, go for the field goal. But their kicker actually has been missing field goals this season. I, like I said earlier, he's actually 0 for 2. And it'll be interesting what Chuck Prior actually calls here with these, la- with these 32 seconds left in the first half. And now, it looks like it'll be first and 10. Taka Phillips takes the snap. Rolling out right. Rolls out right. And he throws the ball out of bounds. Had nobody to throw it to. And that will bring up second down and 10. 25 seconds left to go in the first half. Yeah, great blanket coverage by the Colgate Raiders defense there. Tyco Fields moving to his right. Didn't really see anyone open, so he just threw it out of bounds and stopped the clock with about 25 seconds to go. And now 25 seconds left to go on the Colgate 35-yard line in Colgate's territory with 25 seconds left to go in the first half. Single back formation. Actually, no. Actually, yes, still. Single back formation. Ty Kefels takes the snaps. Looking. Looking. Throws the ball down deep. Down to the middle. To Hunter Hayek. For the first down. 19 seconds left in the first half. It looks like the Seawolves will call a timeout. And that was just a nice throw to his chest. Through the middle. To find Hunter Hayek for a first down. But looks like it's a flag on the play, actually. And now the ball actually looks like it's going to go back. Wow. That was a good play. And now the ball is actually going back. Yeah, another Stony Brook penalty. It looks like it was a hold on one of their offensive linemen. And again, we talked about it with their defense with the face mask that gave Colgate their field goal on their opening drive, I believe. Mm-hmm. Now, with this drive and a hold on the Stony Brook offensive line, they are now out of field goal range, and uh, who knows what they're going to do now. And it's a run by Tyson Lawton. Tyson Lawton running the ball for about 20 yards, and they call a timeout. Wow. Wow. It was second and long. Chuck Fiore. Goes to the decision to run the ball with Tyson Lawton, which is really crazy, but it ended up working out somehow. Runs the ball for about 20 yards on that play. Tyson Lawton is actually, we've been saying his name a lot in this second quarter, and Stony Brook starting to run the ball, pound the ball offensively, and it's actually been working against this Colgate defense. Like I said last week, they gave up 178 rushing yards to Boston College, and it looks like the Seawolves are starting to actually pay attention what Boston College actually did to them last week, being able to run the ball, and that was just a nice run by Tyson Lawton. Really interesting play call on second and long with about 20 seconds left on the clock. Runs the ball, catches the defense off guard, and now this will bring up first and 10. Let's see what actually Chuck Pior actually calls here, but Anthony, what do you really think about that play? That was an amazing I think, honestly, Chuck Pior was just deciding to run out the clock. I think that was his intention. But the big hole able to give uh, Tyshawn Lawton a huge run. And now yeah. the Stony Brook Seawolves are back in business. And now Tycat Foles takes the snap. Serving. Throws the ball. Throws the ball out of bounds with four seconds to go here. And now let's see what the Seawolves actually do. And it looks like it's going to be a flag thrown on a play again. Yeah, and it looks like Justin Morgan and one of the Colgate Raiders defenders kind of got into it at the end of that play, drawing the flag. It'll be interesting to see whether or not this benefits the Seawolves. So far, the penalties have been very beneficial for Colgate in this game. With four seconds left to go, what do you think Chuck Prior should actually call it? Should he actually take the field goal, go to go into halftime with potentially a seven-point lead, or should he make Tykel Phillips Throw a touchdown here with four seconds left to go. And it looks like it's actually a flag committed on the Colgate defense. But, yeah, what do you actually think Chuck Pio should actually call here? I mean, there's only four seconds left in this first half. So I think they just kicked the field goal and 
go at least with a touchdown lead to end the first half. But again, as we just saw with the flag, an unsportsmanlike penalty against the Colgate Raiders able to give their kicker a little more room and finally their first field goal of the season able to go through. That must be a sigh of relief for their kicking department. And at the end of the first half, the Seawolves are now up 10-3 to going into intermission. Yes, and now it's halftime. Seawolves up by 7, 10 to 3. Really having a lot of momentum in that second quarter. And we'll send it to the studio to Matt while we take a halftime break. Welcome back. Today, announcing today's game, me, Mo, Anthony alongside. And we're back in the second half. And it's a run play on first and 10 by Max Hurler for about four, four yards. We'll bring up second and six. Yeah, great design right out of the halftime, doing a quick run right up the middle. We had a receiver run to the left side in a motion, try to draw the defense a little bit out, and able to get a nice short gain on that play there. Now it's second and six on the Colgate 38-yard line. Matt Grant Brenner lined up in shotgun. It looks like it's a jet sweep to the running back for about no gain. Yeah, again, with Miles Bradley, they tried to get their wide receivers involved in the run game. We've been talking about it so far. They tried to run with him to the left side of the field. Sternberg did a great job of covering that edge and able to get the stop there. So now it'll be about third and medium. So it'll be interesting to see what Colgate does here on this play. And now it is 37. Great Brenneman, single back formation. 37 right here. Ray Brennerman takes a snap, throws the ball to Garrett Coit for first down. It's a great catch by Garrett Oakey. We've been talking about him this entire game. He's been Grant Brennerman's number one target. And just a great play design by Colgate, able to get him on that left boundary out of bounds for a great completion. Now it's first and ten, lined up on the Colgate 50. Great Brennerman. Design quarterback run, and he is stuffed down by Dejon Owens, number 16. And overall, a great stuff by Stony Brook. Again, we've been seeing these design runs by Grant Brenneman and this Colgate Raider offense this entire game. And after giving up that big completion to Garrett Oakey, great stop there by Stony Brook. And now a second and nine on the Colgate 50-yard line. Great Brenneman takes a snap. Serving. Roll out right. Looks like he's going to use his legs and runs for about five yards, but it looks like it's going to be a fumble. Fumble on the on the, sto on the Seawolves 40-yard line. Who did it say they're going to pick it up by? Yeah, right now the officials are looking into the pile, and Stony Brooks believes that they have it. Yeah. And according to the referee, it looks like it's still Colgate's ball. And overall, that's the type of intensity Stony Brook's defense needs. Able to get a late pop out there. Brenneman might have been down before that ball went out, actually. But overall, great use of his feet. Grant Brenneman, a great job moving out of the pocket, seeing that the pocket was collapsing. Going to his right and getting a nice gain on that second down play. So now it'll be third and five. Now it's third and five on the Seawolves 40. Single back formation. Great Brennerman rolls out left. Serving in. Runs. He's running for about 20 yards. And that's a first down by Colgate. Great Brennerman using his feet. Didn't see somebody on the left side. Run Cuts up the middle for a nice gain for 20 yards. And that's two plays in a row now. Grant Brenneman has used his feet. I think if you're Stony Brook's defense, you need to put a spy on this guy. He's proven that he is a capable runner when the pocket collapses. On this play, he did a great job running right up the middle. And Stony Brook just had no defender there, and he was able to get about 20 yards on that run. So great job by the Colgate Raider offense there. And now it is first and 10 on the, Col on the Seals 28-yard line. Play action. Play action fake. Throws it to great Oik. Garrett Oki for a loss of two yards on that play. Yeah, great job there by the Stony Rick defense. They did a little motion with Oki, did a little play action 
to the left side of the field. And Silverberg was all over that. And they were able to stuff Oki for a loss of three on that play. So great response there by Stony Brook. And now it will bring a second and 13 on the Seawolves 30-yard line. Single back formation once again. Three receivers outright. Ray Betterman now takes a snap. Play action. Rolls out left. Sets in pressure. Sets in pressure. And it looks like it's a pick. Intercepted. Intercepted by intercepted. Dejon Owens and there. It's intercepted by Dejon Owens. We said his name earlier in this possession. And now gets a pick. Made a nice tackle on Greg Betterman to stop the run for a loss. And now comes in for a pick. And now the Seawolves will get the football with 10 minutes and 47 seconds left in the third quarter. Just a nice interception by Dejon Jones. But we have to talk about the pressure by Makai Smith there. He has been the MVP of the Stony Brook defense so far in this game. He had a huge stop on third down. He had a sack. And now he caused the pressure on Grant Brenneman to throw the pick there to Dejon Owens. So after giving up those two big runs to Grant Brenneman, great response by the Stony Brook defense. Mm -hmm. Being able to get that interception off of what looked like a wobbly pass by Grant Brenneman. And now Stony Brook gets to take over with a seven-point lead in this third quarter. And, yes, that was just really good job by McKay Williams. Like you, I mean, McKay Smith, the MVP of this game, like you said. Getting a quarterback hurry to Great Betterman, and Great Betterman forced to throw that ball. She should have thrown that ball out of bounds, but he was pressured to throw that ball, and it led to Dejon Jones getting a pick. And Dejon Jones, we said his name twice on this possession. A huge quarterback stop up the middle on second down. And he just caught an interception. And that's his first interception of this season by Dejon Jones. And that is a really good job. Yeah, great job by Dejon Owens. Being in the right place at the right time. Makai Smith with the hurry. Grand Runderman had nowhere to go. He tried to force the pass, and Dejon Owens came up with the interception. So 10-3 is your score. 14-54 left to go in this third quarter. And with that, we will take a very short break and send it back to Matt Mankiewicz in the studio. And thank you very much, guys. Uh, let's get you up to date on the games that are going on right now. And... One in particular is the one we're going to be uh, paying a lot of attention to, of course, is that other CAA game that is uh, going to be uh, the emphasis, of course, of our coverage, keeping up to date with the goings-on in our own conference, and that in particular is Richmond taking a 7-3 lead over Lehigh with 12.32 left in the second quarter. Uh, 4 p.m. kickoff for Maine and James Madison. 6 p.m. for a bunch of games. Elon Campbell, St. Francis of Pennsylvania, Delaware, Townsend, New Hampshire, Bucknell and Villanova, Lafayette, William and Mary, and Rhode Island and Albany at 7. Let's send it back. And now, sun back, third quarter. Stony Brook will get the ball on their 12-yard line. And it looks like on first down and 10 when we was on break, it looks like it was just a run by Tyson Lawton, and he just ran it for about one yard on that play. Now let's talk about the interception again by Dejon Owens. Just a fantastic play by Makai Smith getting the pressure on Grant Brenneman as he was moving to his left. The ball might have been tipped by Makai Smith, but again, just a great interception by Dejon Owens, and Stony Brook now in prime position to open up the lead in this game. Actually, now it's actually first down and 10. Ty Salah and runs the ball for about four yards. Great design by Stony Brook. Again, running to that right side of the line. It's been helping them all day in this game. And Ty Salah has been having a great game so far. And they're only going to continue to use him more as this game continues. And now it's third and two. Taka Phil's looking to his coach to change the play call, I think. He's, I think he's about to order boot. Now, Seaboro goes to the right side of him. Taka Phil's takes a snap. Serving. Throws the ball. And a nice catch by Tyler DeVera on that play. The transfer out of Maryland. Nice catch on third and two. Mossing a defender. For the first down. Wow. 
Yeah, great catch by Tyler Devera, able to get his hands on that football with two defenders on him. And as they move the chains, that's what Stony Brook needs to continue chewing away at this clock in the second half. First and ten. Ball on the Seawolves 29-yard line. Single back formation. Tycat Phillips takes the ball. Running back. Seawolves the cat runs. Cuts, to, cuts up to the right. And a nice run for 10 yards. And that will be another first down by the Seawolves. Wow, this ground game has actually picked up by the start of the second quarter by the Seawolves. Yeah, a great run game by the Stony Brook Seawolves. We've been talking about it all game here. Seba started on the left side of Tyquo Fields, moved to his right as they snapped the ball. And overall, just a great run by Seba Neckett, moving to the right side of the offensive line as we've been talking about this whole game. And they got a great run out of that as they are now on the 50-yard line. First and 10 on the 50. Tyquo Fields takes the ball. Hands it over to his running back. Seba Neckett gets stopped. But it looks like it was a game for about one yard in that play, and it will bring up second down. Yeah, they had Sean Harris moving to the left there as a motion. Maybe they were trying to get the Colgate Raider defense to jump on that. They did not. And overall, just a great stop by that defense holding Stony Brook to a short game. And now it'll bring up second and 10 on the Colgate on the Seawolves 49 yard line. Once again, single back formation, two receivers set out on the right side. Sean Harris motions, and it looks like it's a jet sweep, jet sweep up the right. And he gets stopped for about four yards on that play. Really interesting play called jet sweep by Sean Harris. Like we said, he's a, he's a speedy receiver, and with speed, jet sweeps actually work. Exactly, and we talked about it on the previous play. Sean Harris did a fake motion on that play, but now they actually went with the motion to Sean Harris, moving to his left towards that sideline, able to get a few yards, like three or four yards, and now as we move on to third down, it'll be interesting what the Stony Brook Seawolves do on the Colgate side of the field. Yes, and now they're in Colgate's territory. Territory. Third and five. Tycat Phillips takes the snap, serving, throws the ball, and it looks like he'll get stuck. But that was just... Oh, actually, it's the first down. Yeah, great catch by Khalil Newton. It looked like he was very close to that first down marker. The referees are going to give him that spot for the first down. And just again, another quick throw by Tyquo Fields. Newton was in the middle of the field, able to make a nice catch and run up field for that first down. And that was a catch for five yards for his first reception today, Khalil Newton, after he was the leading receiver last week with 76 receiving yards. And Tyson Lawton, Tyson Lawton runs the ball up right side for about 10 yards, and it will bring up another Seawolves first down as this ground game has been working this whole game against Fordham. And now it's a first down. Tyson Lyon really been looking good this game, actually. Exactly. We talk about Tyson Lyon. He's been the MVP of this offense. We talk about Makai Smith with the defense. Tyson Lyon has been that premier back for the Stony Brook Seawolves so now far Steven in this the game. And now breaks a tackle for about eight yards. And now we're just seeing the duel of the running backs breaking tackles, moving the chains. And that will bring up second down and short as Seawolves enter Red zone territory. Yeah, exactly. Tyson Lawton and Siba both having fantastic games here at Colgate. And just overall, that running back duo, the Colgate Raiders have not been able to stop them. And I think Stony Brook needs to continue to do that as they move forward with this drive. Taka Phillips take the snap. Second and five. Siba runs the ball. And it's a, for a first down, runs the ball about five yards on that play. Nice run up the middle by Siba in the cut. He yeah. running it right up the gut with Anthony Catapano, the center, blocking there. And overall, as I've been saying, their running game has been absolutely fantastic. The Stony Brook Seawolves should continue to pound the ball until the Colgate Raiders can prove they can actually stop them. Because so far, their run game has been absolutely fantastic. Yes, and now the ball is spotted on Colgate's 13-yard line. They are in Colgate's territory, red zone territory. First and ten. Tyke Phillips lines up under center. Hands it off to Tyson Lawton. Run for about three yards to the Colgate 10-yard line. 
Again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Going with yet another run to the right side with Tyson Lawton and able to get a nice gain there on that first down. Yeah. And with four minutes left to go in the third quarter, we're just seeing Stony Brook take a lot of possession time on this drive, which is started on their own 13-yard line. Exactly. Just chewing up that clock. I think Stony Brook, that's what they need to do, considering they have a touchdown lead right now. You don't want anything crazy to happen with Colgate. Although their offense hasn't been super great all season, they have been pretty good in this game. So just a great strategy by Chuck Pior and the Seawolves offense. Second and seven. Ball lineup on the 10-yard line. And Tyson Lawton with the run for about five yards on that play. Which... I think we'll bring up third third down. Again, a great design by Stony Brook. You don't want to take any chances in the air on this side of the field, especially when you're this close to the end zone. So a great design play, running it to the right, once again getting a short gain as it's now third and short. Yes, third and three. Ball on the five-yard line, on Colgate's five-yard line. Third and three right now. Todd Caffell. Tykel takes a snap, hands it off to Seba the Cat. Seba looking for room, and it looks like that will be a first down on the Colgate one-yard line as it will bring up first and goal for the Seawolves. Again, just run, run, run. That's been the Stony Brook's offensive MO in this drive, and honestly, I'd be surprised if they pass it again on this drive. Yeah. And now, first and goal, hands off to Seba the Cat. And it looks like Seaborn the Cat will find the end zone and scores a touchdown for the Seawolves. Actually, yeah. it looks like they're going to mark him a little bit short here. They're going to mark him short. Now they'll bring up second and goal. Wow, it actually looked like he was actually in for the touchdown, but second and goal for the Seawolves offense. And Tarkan Fields lined up under center. Tyson Lawton in the backfield. And a quarterback sneak this time. And now the Seals will score as Tykel Fields brings up a rushing touchdown on a quarterback sneak. And now they're up by 13, 16-3 with two minutes left to go in the third quarter. Nice play called by Chuck Prior. Quarterback sneak, second and one. And wow, the Seals actually puts up a touchdown to go up by two scores. Yeah, exactly. Just a great play call by Chuck Prior. You don't want to risk anything that close to the goal line. Just a simple quarterback sneak with Typo Fields. And now with the 17-3 lead, the Seawolves are a bit comfortable now with only about 2.13 left in the third quarter. Well, looks like we're going to go on commercial break and we'll send it to Matt in the WSB studios. There you go. A little music for the background there. So, we do have updates. And one in particular, Richmond extending their lead to 14-3 right now. It's 7.02 left in the second. Rest of the CAA, as you know by now, James Madison and Maine kick off at 4 p.m. 6 p.m. kickoffs for Elon Campbell, St. Francis of Pennsylvania and Delaware, Townsend, New Hampshire, Bucknell and Villanova, Lafayette and William and Mary. Rhode Island and Albany kick off at 7. Now, continuing on with other games going on. We'll do top 25 in a bit, but we do have the Giants and the Cubs at Wrigley Field. Top of the second only. The Giants have opened up a 5-1 lead, as they've been doing a lot of lately. 4 p.m., 4.07 to be exact for the Rangers and the Athletics. 4.35, Blue Jays and Orioles starting a single admission doubleheader. At Camden Yards. 605 Rockies and Phillies. Rays and Tigers at 610. Brewers and Indians at 610 as well. 635 Nationals and Pirates. 710 starts for the Angels and Astros, Royals and Twins, Red Sox and White Sox. 715 for the Reds and the Cardinals. 720 Marlins and Braves. Yankees and Mets a little later than usual because of a pregame ceremony for the 20th anniversary of 9 11 at 745. And Padres and Dodgers, D-backs and Mariners at 9-10. Let's send it back. And now, 
we're back. And Anthony, what do you think went well on that Seagulls drive when they went up and just scored a touchdown to go up 17-3 to against this Colgate defense? Well, we've been talking about it ever since the second quarter. It's been their run game. Tyquo Fields obviously getting the QB sneak touchdown. But Tyshawn Lawton and Seba Niket, he and Tyshawn Lawton have been able to get over 100 yards rushing now combined between the two of them. So their run game has been absolutely fantastic. And overall, we did forget to mention this earlier, Guglielmo, the kicker, he did get replaced actually mm -hmm. after missing that field goal early on in the game he was replaced by number 56 mike boyle so it'll be interesting to see if the sea wolves keep that kicking change or if that's just going to be for this game yeah so it'll be interesting to see yeah. how that goes moving forward and now study book kicks off the football to colgate where's the ball and really good return yeah, so great return. Great yard. return by Jake Spencer, the wide receiver out of Gladewine, Gladwine, Pennsylvania. So overall, Colgate, you're down two touchdowns. You got to realize that time's running out. You don't have that much time left. Mm -hmm. You only have about a quarter and about a minute now. So, no need to panic. You're only down two touchdowns, but their Colgate defense just hasn't played well. So, what does the offense need to do to make up for that? Um, so, basically, Colgate just need to be more aggressive on the offensive side. We're seeing a lot of quarterback run and just running the ball, and they're not playing aggressive with throwing the ball downfield, which they was getting them off guard in the first quarter, throwing the ball downfield. But we haven't really been seeing a lot of um, Garrett Oki's name actually and he was actually the momentum starter of this game and I feel like if they continue to target him they will actually put up some points like touchdowns on the board because Stony Brook's offense is actually having a lot of momentum with the ground game going on exactly and their ground game has been the reason why they have this two touchdown lead right now and at the end of the day, I think that was Stony Brook's game plan going into this, right? Ultimately, just pound the football, run it down their throats, and the Raiders just have not been able to keep them off the field. We talked about Colgate's time of possession in the first half, how they were trying to dominate and keep the Stony Brook offense off the field. Now the roles have kind of flipped. You have the Stony Brook offense just trying to run out the clock. They now have a two-touchdown lead and trying to keep the Raiders off the field. Very interesting. Remember when I told you earlier that the Raiders had a six-minute difference? The Seawolves actually have a two-minute difference now in the time possession by just running the football. And like I said earlier, if you pound the football, it's going to lead a lot of open opening through the receiver through that secondary because they're going to be worried about the run a lot. And with them just running the football, pounding the ball through their guts, they have no. the Colgate's defense has no answer against this running game. But Tyson Law and, and Seba Niket, Really playing their role today. And now the game is back. It will be first and 10 on the Colgate 31 yard line. As Greg Brennerman hands it off. And this is a stop by McKay Smith. Nice tackle for a loss. And McKay Smith, we've been seeing his name a lot this game. And just, he's just really been the MVP of this defense. Nice job by McKay Smith tackling Max Hurler. For a one-yard loss, and now it will bring up second and 11 on this play. Greg Brenneman lines up in single-back formation, second and 15, actually, as it will be a play action. Greg Brenneman throws the ball, and it's a nice pass deflection on that play. Pass deflected by Kaliki Katsu Jacobs. Yeah, great pass deflection by Jacobs, able to get his hands on the ball. But either way, it would have been a difficult catch for the receiver to make. Now, it is very interesting because the Raiders have been going with a much faster up-tempo pace to this drive, and that makes sense given they are down two touchdowns. So I think for the Raiders, as their goal, they should definitely try to get in the red zone by the end of the third quarter if they can. It'll be interesting to see how that happens. And now it's third and long. 
Great Betterman rolling out left. And he just throws the ball out of bounds. Nice quarterback pressure by Casey Williams. And Casey Williams really comes up in clutch time, really. Whenever it's third and long, fourth and long, fourth and short, third and short, he's going to be that answer on the defense to make sure you get a play out of him. And now it is fourth and long, and it will bring up the punt team for Colgate to punt the ball to the Seawolves with one minute left in the third quarter. So far, the Colgate offense has not been able to respond compared to Stony Brook's offense. What they've been trying to do, these quarterback design runs with Grant Brennerman, um, it just hasn't worked in this third quarter. And with Stony Brook eating up so much clock, there's only so many opportunities the Raiders are going to get to try to come back in this game. And there goes the punt. Punt. And Seabrook and Kevin will fair catch it on the 30-yard line. As the Seals will get the ball back with 1 minute and 13 seconds left in the third quarter. Now, what do you think the Seals will actually do here? Do you actually think they will continue with their ground game or actually start to throw this defense off guard and start attacking that secondary? Again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. If the run game is working, which it has been so far in this third quarter, I don't even see why Tyco Fields needs to throw the ball here. Yeah. Just keep running the ball, keep chewing the clock, if the Colgate Raiders can get a stop, then I would suggest throwing the football. Taka Phil takes the snap. Play action. Throws the ball. Upright. Upright to Delonte Helms. And a nice play action fake as he will complete this ball for 50 yards on that play. Wow. That yeah, I mentioned. Really exactly. And I mentioned if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Instead, they use the run advantage that they've had this entire game to their advantage, doing a play-action fake. And Tyco Fields throwing a nice ball to the left sideline to Delonte Helms Jr., who's actually his first catch today, surprisingly. Yeah. So getting other receivers involved is just great for the Stony Brook Seawolves to see and kind of keep the Raiders' defense on their toes. And now the ball is spotted on the Colgate 35-yard line as Tyco Fields lines up on the center, takes a snap, hands it off, hands it off, to number 28 for a nice run for 10 yards. And this ground game has actually been the answer to the Seawolves' offense. But Tyson Lawton coming back on the field. Roland Dempster is able to get a nice run there. And Stony Brook, their philosophy right now is fantastic. If you're up and their defense is not stopping you whatsoever, just keep the offense out there and kind of try to score more points as much as you can to not let the Raiders come back in this game. As the Seawolves will let it run, and that will be the end of the third quarter, and we'll now send it back to Matt to the WSB Studios. And thanks, guys. We are, of course... Following a bunch of games in progress, one in particular, Lehigh and Richmond, and Richmond just scored again. The Spiders up on Lehigh by a score of 21-3. to The Mountain Hawks looking for a solution here, and with 338 left before halftime. Main and James Madison at 4 p.m. Elon Campbell at 6, as is the case for St. Francis and Delaware, Towson, New Hampshire, Bucknell and Villanova, Lafayette, William and Mary, and 7 p.m., you all be taking on Rhode Island. Okay, we got that for you. But we'll also follow the top 25. And next week's opponent, still comfortably in control, but not by a lot when you think about it. Upset in the making, though, and that means they are going to be on an emotional high when they take on the Seawolves next week. Who am I talking about? The 12th-ranked University of Oregon Ducks. 35-21 lead over third-ranked Ohio State right now with 10-10 left in the fourth quarter. They will not be number 12 next week. At the end of three, number 25 Auburn leads Alabama State 55 to nothing. At the half, 13th-ranked Florida over South Florida 35-3. 19th-ranked Virginia Tech leads Middle Tennessee 7-0. And Notre Dame, eighth-ranked Irish, over Toledo right now, 7-6 to six at 228 left in the first. It's early. Let's send it back. And thank you for that, Matt, as always. And moving into this fourth quarter, Stony Brook having a two-touchdown lead over the Raiders. 
And honestly, Stony Brook has just been able to do whatever they want offensively. They've been able to run the ball, which is something that is always helpful in these types of games, especially on the road. And now, after that last couple of runs, they decided to go with a play action and hit Helms on the sideline. So, overall, Stony Brook keeping their foot on the accelerator here, and as they're now in the red zone as we approach this beginning of the fourth quarter, what do you think Stony Brook needs to do, or rather what Colgate needs to do to get back in this game? Well, Colgate, first of all, needs to stop Stony Brook offensively because now the Seals actually just figured it out. You run the ball, you cast the defense off guard, you attack the secondary, but you able to have a good running game, you have a great play-action attack. And that is actually similar to the Titans in the NFL. When they're able to run the ball with Derrick Henry, right, they hit up with a lot of play action last season, and it was able to hit A.J. Brown a lot and Corey Davis all just play action because if you're able to have a good running game, play action open ups, and there's a lot of holes in that secondary because they're just worried about the run too much. And now the Seawolves will actually get the ball, actually have the ball at in red zone territory with that nice run with Roland Dempster, actually. And now the fourth quarter begins. Ty Ken Phillips line up on the center. Hands the ball up to Tyson Lawton. Tyson Lawton running. Runs it up the middle. And he has a nice 15-yard gain. Breaking tackles. Dropping his feet. And wow, this ground game. And this give it props to the offensive line on that play. Because that was just great blocking. And now it looks like they'll go up and hurry up, actually. Taka Phil takes a snap. And Tyson Lawton runs. Runs the ball. And he has it for the touchdown. Nice run by Tyson Lawton up the middle for a 10-yard gain. And now the Seawolves are up 23-3. Wow. What a fantastic run by Tyson Lawton. And honestly, that's just the icing on the cake to this ground game that has been absolutely sensational in this game. Tyson Lawton has been absolutely fantastic. He's done a lot of fantastic runs to the right side of the field. With this touchdown, he ran it right up the middle as he did on the previous play, and Stunderbrook now just adding on to their lead. Yes, and with that touchdown, Tyson Lawton having averaging 7 yards per carry today, which is really good after last week, just averaging about 2 yards per carry. And, wow. And that was just a nice kick for the extra point, and now that puts up Stony Brook 24-3 with 14 minutes and 33 seconds left to go in this fourth quarter. As we'll go to break, and we're sending it right back to Matt. Okay, guys, we'll uh, keep you up to date on everything. And first of all, we're going to find out whether or not Richmond scored again. And they were, of course, comfortably in control. But right now, we'll take a quick look at what's going on in, of course, college football. We'll also remind you that the sports section is on this and every Sunday night from 10 p.m. to midnight. And taking a quick look once again. Number three, Ohio State, as we said, in trouble. 10-10 left in the fourth. Oregon, the 35-21 lead. And Ohio State trying to get back into this one. But that's not what we're concerned with at the moment. What we are concerned with is that other game in the CAA. And we'll get that for you in just a second. And there you go. 28-3, to Richmond scored again. Minute 34 left in the second. We're only just short of halftime, but let's send it back right now. Okay. Okay, right back. Mo right here and Anthony alongside. So, Anthony, we just saw on that last possession, the Seawolves go up and scores a touchdown with two big runs by Tyson Lawton back-to-back, and which led them to a touchdown. Now, what do you really think about this ground game going on with the Seawolves as it started early in the second quarter and it's been giving them a lot of momentum and giving them a lot of chances to score with just this ground game going on, this newly discovered run game? What do you think? You mentioned the run game, which is fantastic. But as we mentioned in the game against New Hampshire, their leading rusher was Tyquel Fields, who's their quarterback. Mm-hmm. So in this game, Tyquel Fields hasn't had 
that much of an impact in the ground game. But as you've been saying, Tyson Lawton, Seba Nakat, they both have had phenomenal games against mm -hmm. the Colgate Raiders. And going into it, this has to have been their game plan, punching the ground game with Lawton and Nakat. And at the end of the day, it's just fantastic to see this revolutionized run game. So hopefully they can carry this run game into future games that they play. Yeah. But especially when you're on the road, getting that ground game off to a hot start is something that you need to have, and that's something Stony Brook's been able to do. Yes. And now Stony Brook will actually kick it off to Colgate. All right. They get set ready for the kickoff. And, oh, look. And that's a run for about 20 yards on that kickoff as the ball will be spotted in the 21-yard line. So, so far, Stony Brook's defense, after not playing their best in that first quarter, has been dominant the past three quarters. So, for the Colgate offense, if you're Grant Brenneman, what do you need to do in order to get back into this game before the clock runs out? You're going to have to hit a quick strike. You're going to have to throw the ball downfield and pray for a score on this play. Grant Mentorin getting ready for the snap. Grant Oki lines up in motion, and it's a run design play by... Yeah, design run for John Cox, uh -huh. the running back out of Florida. Yeah. So we saw three receivers to the right that time, and right now they're trying to get the run game going. Obviously, you don't want to get it all in one play. Yeah. And now Greg Betterman rolls out right, throws the ball. Oh! And Greg, Garrett Oki, if he had his balance, that could have been a touchdown, but a nice throw down the sideline to Garrett Oki. For about 20 yards on that play. And that was just a nice job by Greg Brennerman rolling out right and throwing the ball to Grant Oki for the first down on the Colgate 50 yard line. Yeah, great play design by Grant Brennerman in this Colgate offense, rolling to his right and able to get Garrett Oki on a nice completion to the right side out of bounds. And that was just a throw right there by Grant Brennerman on first down, throwing it to his running back. For about five yards on that play. It'll bring up second and five. Single back formation. Two receivers li line up on both sides. Greg Betterman spins off. Greg Betterman looking. Runs. And he runs for the first down. But there's a flag committed on that play. And it looks like that play will actually be going back on that. It looks like a hole on one of their offensive linemen. So, yes, that play is going back. But I find it interesting that they're using John Cox more in this fourth quarter. We mentioned Max Herman. He's been their feature back in this game. So using John Cox, he only had nine yards in the game against Boston College. So it'll be interesting to see if they want to use him more in the run game or more in the passing game as we've been seeing through these past two plays. Yeah. And now the ball... First, first, no, first and long on the Colgate 42-yard line. Ray Brennerman takes a snap. Looking right. Throws the ball. And he throws in a nice catch. Great catch by Miles Bradley, by my number 26. Oh. And that's what you need to do if you're the Raiders offense, getting quick throws, easy throws. He stepped up in the pocket, find Miles Bradley over the middle, and just a great completion by Grant Bretterman. And he finds Miles Bradley, and now Grant Bretterman takes a snap, looking right, and it's dropped. Yeah, that's a bad drop by Ryan CK, number but 18, the junior from Lake Forest, Illinois. And it's just sad because that would have been a nice completion, but unfortunately that he dropped it. Yes, and on that play, he was wide open, and he just drops the catch. And wow. Second down and 10. Ball on the Colgate, I mean on the Seawolves 40. Greg Benjamin takes a snap, rolling out left. 
Throws it. And a nice, oh! And he drops it. Garrett Oki drops the ball. Looks like it was a nice place ball through the sideline, but drops it. Wow. It would have been a tough catch for Garrett Oki to make. But, again, just great blanket coverage by the Seawolves defense that time. Forcing Oki to try to make a difficult catch on that left sideline. Yes. And now it'll be third down and 10. No, second down and 10 on the Seawolves 40 yard line. Great Betterman takes the snap. Looking right. Throws the ball to Max Herneman. Max Herneman makes one miss, but still gets tackled. And now they'll bring up third down and medium. Max Herman was the leading receiver in their game against Boston College, but now not as much as a factor in the receiving game in this game. Mainly their main target has been Garrett Oki. So it will be interesting to see if they look his way here on this crucial third down. And now it's third, I mean fourth and nine. Well, that will bring up actually fourth down actually. Fourth and nine. Single back formation. Greg Betterman takes a snap. Rolling out left. As he throws it. And a nice catch by Max Herleman for the first down. And it looks like it will be actually first and goal by Max Herleman. Bring it in that catch Again. for the first and goal set up by Greg Betterman. Yeah, it looks like JV on Queen, the center, might have gotten away with a hold there on Makai Smith. But, again, just a fantastic catch by the running back, Max Herleman. And, overall, this is what the Raiders need to do. Just move down, down the field quickly and try to score a touchdown here. Now it's first and goal. Ball spotted on the 8-yard line. And it's a timeout called by the Raiders, actually, with 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. So it's first and goal for the Raiders here. They're down three touchdowns. Mm -hmm. If they score a touchdown, they're able to cut it to a two-touchdown deficit. But I think ultimately the goal for the Raiders is the only way they come back in this game is with their defense. Yeah. Their defense needs to step up and play big in this fourth quarter if they have a shot. But so far, their defense just has been nowhere to found. And now we go going on commercial break, and we're sending it back to Matt. Okay, let's take a look at what's going on in that Richmond game against Lehigh, and it is at halftime. 28-3 to is your score. The Spiders in the lead. Also, uh, looking at top 25, as we said, next week's opponent is Oregon, and Ohio State has narrowed Oregon's lead. The 12th-ranked Ducks lead the 3rd-ranked Buckeyes 35-28. to I should remind everybody that this game is in Columbus. Oregon is on the road, and they will venture out east to take – actually, back west. We're going out there next week to take on the Ducks. Now, with 4.05 left, that's uh, with 7.50.46 left in the fourth. So, Ohio State's got to get the ball back, but they're only down one score. Uh, 4.05 left in the third, number 13, Florida. Has a comfortable 35-13 lead over South Florida. 118 left before halftime. 19th ranked Virginia Tech up 14 7 on Middle Tennessee State. 1134 left in the second. 8th ranked Notre Dame up 7 6 on Toledo. And one final. Sitting number 25 Auburn beat Alabama State 62 to nothing. Let's send it back. As we send it back us now to this game. Broadcaster today, Mo and Anthony alongside. Anthony, so Koge is on first and goal. Do you think that they will actually score here, or do you think that they will actually come up with a field goal here? Well, with 14-33 left in this fourth quarter, I really don't think you can settle for field goals at this point anymore. You're in the red zone. I think they're going to use all four downs to their advantage as best as they can, and honestly, they need a touchdown right now. And now it is first and goal. With 10 minutes left to go in the fourth quarter, ball spotted on the C on the Seawolves' eight-yard line in Seawolves' territory. 
Single back formation. Redman takes a snap, hands it out to Max Herleman, and it's a run for about three yards. And it'll be second and goal on the Seawolves' four-yard line. Yeah, and they brought in Mike Bavino, the tight end, to bring along that right side of the line. So I thought maybe they were going to run in that direction. They went towards the left and able to get a short gain, but they need to score quickly here. That was a good ace halfback misdirection on that play. As better as actually a direct snap for about three yards on that play. Yeah, the snap to Michael Brescia, the freshman from Hinsdale, Illinois, the backup quarterback. Hasn't seen any action so far this season, but it is very interesting that they made the quarterback switch this late into the game. Yeah. Probably, he's probably more mobile. As it'll be third and goal. And a direct snap once again. But he is stuck. He is stuck. And just a nice play. Nice job by McKay Smith. Drawing up the outside. And a nice inside blitz. For a tackle for a loss. And it'll bring up fourth and goal. A great stop by Rigi Dimanchi, number 30. And we haven't really mentioned his name yet today. In the game against New Hampshire, he had seven tackles, half a tackle for loss, and he had one of the three forced fumbles in that game. But just him and Makai Smith on that play, able to blow it up, blow up that quarterback design run right up the middle. Now they're going for on a fourth down. It'll be interesting no, to see if they get it. Take the snap. Throws it. And it looks like our camera angle can't really see what happened on the side, but it looks like the Seawolves got a stop on that play. Yeah, it looks like an incompletion towards that right side of the end zone. Michael Bercia trying, trying to throw someone open in that corner. Obviously received a lot of pressure, so he was under duress on that throw, but unable to score there, so a Change of downs here as Stony Brook looks to regain possession as they are up 24-23, or 24-3 in this game. And now we're on commercial break, and we're sending back to Matt in the studio. Okay, let's check up on Richmond, see what the Spiders have done to extend their lead. And, well, the latest is it's still at halftime, 28-3. Richmond leading Lehigh, Maine and James Madison, about a half hour away. Elon Campbell, St. Francis in Delaware, Towson in New Hampshire, Bucknell, Villanova, Lafayette, William, William and Mary in Rhode Island and Albany round out your CAA schedule. But another game we're paying particularly close attention to because they are next week's opponent, the 12th ranked Oregon Ducks, still maintaining a 35 28 lead over number three Ohio State at Columbus. So it would be a big, big upset for the Ducks and a uh, rather emotional high when they face the Seawolves next week. 35-13, to 13, 13th ranked Florida leads South Florida with minute 28 left in the third. Minute four left before halftime, Virginia Tech up on Middle Tennessee, 14-7. Ninth through eight ranked Notre Dame rather over Toledo, 7-6. 62 to nothing was number 25 Auburn score over Alabama State. And checking up on baseball, most of the games are late, but there is one going on now, and that entails the uh, Giants and the Cubs. 6-1 Giants, bottom three, and the Yankees and Mets, of course, they will be playing at City Field tonight. There will be a remembrance of 9-11 on the 20th anniversary also at City Field and the roles the Yankees and the Mets played in the aftermath therein. Let's send it back. Okay, Matt, thank you. And now the Seals will actually get the ball back in their own territory. But that was just a nice stop by the Seals defense on fourth and goal. And it's looking right here like that play right there was probably the dagger to the game. And now it's first and 10. Tassalon takes the carry. Tassalon makes a lot of people miss. And a nice run for about nine yards by Tassalon. And she will bring up second and one. 
Great run by Tyson Lawton, but let's talk about that fourth and goal for Colgate. Michael Brescia under a lot of pressure from Dakar Edwards, and the MVP, I believe, of this game, Makai Smith. So Colgate turns it over on downs, and with Stony Brook backed up in their own territory, territory, they just decided to run the ball, try to get themselves some more breathing room for this next drive. That's actually, it was actually a first down by Tyson Lawton. And it's first and 10. Ty Caffell's lined up on the center. Ball spot on the 10-yard line. Carries it. Tyson Lawton takes the ball. And he, a nice another run by Tyson Lawton. Didn't see nothing in the middle and cuts it up to the sideline for about 10 yards on that play once again by Tyson Lawton. Great misdirection by Tyson Lawton. Started to go to the middle, moved a little bit to the left, and then he redirected himself to the right side of the field where there was a huge hole. And he is able to keep himself in bounds to keep the clock moving with about 7.40 to go in this game. And yeah, Tyson Lawton today ran the ball for about 129 yards in a touchdown today, which is really impressive after last week with only 42 carries. And now that will bring up First down and 10 on the Stony Brook 21-yard line. I see when the cat takes the ball, but he gets stopped for a gain about two yards on that play as it will bring up second down and eight for the Seawolves. And the clock looks like it stopped here, oh. so I'm not sure if someone called a timeout perhaps. Or it's a flag coming on that play. Looks like the ball actually be going back. Looks like a holding was actually committed on that play. As now actually will be first and 15 as the ball is spotted on the Seawolves 21 yard line. Good news for the Seawolves though. The clock is still running as we approach under seven minutes to go left in this game. Tyka feels lined up on the center. Hands it out to Seaborn the cut, and he gets stopped. Great stop Whoa. there by Milton Brash the second, the linebacker out of Kansas. And that's a guy that we haven't really seen in this game for this Raiders defense. And it's unfortunate he hasn't had a bigger impact on this game for the Raiders, but so far on that play, just a great stop by him. Yeah, and that was just a great job tackle by Milton Brash on. As they bring a second and long, ball spotted on the Seawolves 20 yard line. Tyker throws, drop back, throws the ball, and oh, overthrows a Khalil Newton. And if he would have actually completed that throw, it actually would have been a tough catch by Khalil Newton to actually grab on that play. As now it'll be third and long, with six minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. Ball spotted on the 20 yard line. But my question is, why did you make that play? Why did you decide to throw the ball deep on second down? I understand if it's third and long and you try to do that, that's fine. But if you're the Seawolves, you want the clock to continue moving. And now with the clock stopped at 6.04, you might possibly give the Raiders another chance to score in this game. Yeah. Well, that play was very questionable, but now it's third and 16. As Taka Fos hands it over to Seaborn the Cat, and Seaborn the Cat's run. For about 10 yards, no, 12 yards on that play as it will bring up fourth down with five minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. And it looks like the Seawolves will bring out their punt team. Steven Niket with a nice run up the middle, but with 16 yards to go, it wasn't enough. So now you're going to punt the ball with about 530 left to go in this game. So the Raiders, you have another shot now to try to score in this game. However, that missed fourth and goal on their previous drive, I believe, is going to be costly in this game. Yes. And it will actually really be tough for the Colgate Raiders to actually score three touchdowns with five minutes left to go in this game. And the ball is fair catched by Jake, by Jake Spencer. And the ball will be spotted on Colgate's 30 yard line. And now we'll go on break, and we'll send it back to Matt in the studios. 
Okay, guys, we'll take a look at the games that we've been following all day long and also look at what's coming up ahead in the, both the CAA and in Top 25. In particular, that Oregon-Ohio State game, which, of course, was narrowed down to a single touchdown separating the two teams, and the 12th-ranked Oregon Ducks are, of course, next week's opponent. 5.58 left in the fourth, scores the same. 35-28 in favor of the Ducks. At the end of three, 13th-ranked Florida, 35-13 lead over South Florida. And let's take a look at the CAA. Richmond, start of the third quarter, up 28-3 on Lehigh. 4 p.m. kickoff, which is less than 20 minutes away. Maine and James Madison, uh, 6 p.m. starts. For Elon and Campbell, St. Francis of Pennsylvania and Delaware, Towson in New Hampshire, Bucknell and Villanova, Lafayette and William and Mary, 7 p.m. start. For Rhode Island and Albany, let's send it back. Welcome back. And Anthony, in this game so far, we're seeing a lot of grounding attack by the Seawolves offense. And look like this game is actually put away by the Seawolves actually having a three touchdown lead against Colgate. What do you think Colgate will actually do here with five minutes left to go? Will they sub in their backups since it's actually considered garbage time or will they actually try to like score here? Well, I think if you sub in your backups during this garbage time, I think that sends the wrong message to your team where Basically, you're saying, hey, you know, we're down three touchdowns, and at this point, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. I think at this point, the Raiders definitely need to try to score because who knows? They might still have a chance of coming back in this game, although it is very unlikely. So with 5-12 left in this game, it'll be interesting to see maybe exploring with different players to see who they can use in future games. But again, I would say try to score here for sure. Yeah. Colgate get the ball. Great Brennan, man. That's the ball. Throws the ball down deep. Throws it. And there's a nice... Ca oh, wait, let's... Wait, wait, wait. And... Wow. Nice catch, actually. By Miles Bradley on that on that possession. And that would be wake up a first down to 10 on the Colgate 50-yard line. Mac... Greg Brennerman throws it. Ooh, and he overthrows Joshua Zott through the sideline, and it will bring up second and ten. With the Raiders running hurry up here, that's what exactly you need to do. The first play that we mentioned is a great design, great throw and catch by Miles Bradley. But on that second play that we just talked about, just a little too high for Joshua Zott out of bounds on that left sideline. And that will be second and ten. Greg Brennerman rolling out right, throws it. Oh, and that is, that will bring up a first down by the catch. Great catch by Ryan CK as Brenneman was moving to his right. It looked like he was trying to give a stiff arm there to the defender. Didn't work, and he ultimately fell down out of bounds. And now will be a first down. And Brenneman, and a quarterback, Harry, who made that hit on that play? Trying to see who made the hook on that play, actually. And that was my number 43. We've talked about the pressure. Chris Campbell. Oh, Chris Campbell, play. fantastic hurry on that play. But we talk about the Seawolves defense and their front seven all game, getting pressure on Grant Renneman, and it's continuing to work even here during the stretch. Now it'll be second down and 10. Grant Renneman, running out left, throws it. And who? And Garrett Oki drops the ball through the sideline, which looked like he was open on that play. He just couldn't catch on to that ball. Wow. Yeah, it was a great play by the Raiders after that incompletion. Moving to his left, Grant Renderman threw the ball perfectly in between that little zone on the left sideline. For Garrett Oki, just couldn't make the catch on that sideline as we approach under four minutes to go in this game. Oh, it looked like he was open. He just couldn't grab him onto that catch. And it will now bring up Dead Along. Greg Betterman line up and shotgun. Takes a snap. Looks left. 
Rolling. And an interception. And the pass is picked off. It's picked off. Jordan Jackson Jordan. on the play. Oh. A fantastic interception by the Sea Wolves. There was a flag on the play. I believe it's going to be holding, so it probably won't matter. But, but that just makes the ultimate stamp on any comeback attempt by the Raiders in this game. And Jordan Jackson, nice pick. The red shirt sophomore on that play. Wow. And the Sea Wolves will get the ball back on their 30 yard line with four minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. And it looks like they're bringing up their backup, Joshua Zamont, into this game. Wow. Nice job by Jordan Jackson reading that route. And picked off Greg Betterman. And that'll be the second time he gets picked off. And that is actually similar to last week, guys. He was picked off two times last week, too. Exactly. Just a poor decision by Grant Brenneman. A great pick by the defender. And Stony Brook now just needs to run out the clock. And that's what exactly what he just did on first down. Zamont hands up the ball to Jaden Cook. And Jaden Cook runs for about four yards in that play. As they bring up second down and six. Three minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. Jasmine Zamont. In this game, actually, the Sea was actually saying this game is over, and they put down their third, third team in, third and second team in in this possession. Yeah, no, no need to risk Tyquo Fields to a possible injury. So bringing in the backups at this stage in the game with a three touchdown lead makes a lot of sense. That's what Zamont lines up on the center, hands the ball off to Jaden Cook, and Jaden Cook gets a nice run for seven yards in our play. And it looks like it'll bring up a first down for the Seawolves. But even in garbage time, you can see the Raiders, they just haven't been able to stop the Stony Brook run game, regardless of who's running the ball. Actually, no, it's third and short, actually. Actually, rule of short, actually, for the first down. It'll be third down and two. Joshua Zamont lines up in shotgun. And like you said, this Colgate defense has not found an answer to the Seawolves ground game actually going on. And that will be third and short, second quarter. Rolling Dumpster carries it for about eight yards in that play up the middle and it will be a Seawolves first down. And that is the ultimate stamp in this game. If they're able to continue running the ball as they have been this whole game, they'll try to chew the clock out and ultimately put this game to a close with yeah. just about two minutes to go now. Yeah. And that'll be the ball spotted on Colgate's 50 yard line. First down and 10. Two minutes left to go in this game. And it looks like the Seawolves will just run this clock out. Actually, it looks like they're going in victory formation here. Looks like they're just about to kneel the football and let the clock wind down as Jason Mazamont takes a snap and takes a nil. Bring down second down and long. It looks like they're just going to continue kneeling the game and just putting this game away. So with this victory, the Seals go 1-1 one and, one and Colgate goes 0-2. Oh and, and it's just a statement victory by the Seawolves having a nice run attack in this game. And with them running the ball, actually, was the reason why they actually won this game against Colgate. Actually, actually going victory formation once again. And just nail the football and just put this game away. Yeah, with this game coming to a close, Stony Brook looking like they're going to take a 24-3 victory over the Colgate Raiders. We talk about the run game, but we have to talk about the defense as well. Makai Smith having an absolute fantastic game. Yes. Getting a sack, getting a crucial hurry that led to one of the interceptions. And ultimately, Stony Brook just played an all-around great game. Tyquo Fields not using his leg as much, but his accuracy was definitely there in this yeah. game. And overall, this game just came down to their run game and their defense. Both showed up in a huge way today. And... Especially against a team like Colgate, these are the kind of wins that Stony Brook needs to get in order to further advance their playoff hopes. 
And that was just a great state. This is just a good statement of victory by the Seagulls, actually. As the clock will wind down, it looks like this game is over. Yeah, with the last run there to Roland Dempster, it looks like the Stony Brook Seawolves have this game secured as the Seawolves will walk away with a win here, 24-3. to The Seawolves will now move to 1-1 one one on the season as the Colgate Raiders move to 0-2. Oh yes. With that, thank you. Honor to call this game, Mo, alongside Anthony, and we'll send him back to Matt.